Good afternoon, my dear students of class eight. Uh, today, uh, we will be doing the reading and understanding of the second part of the lesson, How the Camel Got Its Hump. Uh, this is an abridged story by Rudyard Kipling, as you all are aware. We have done the first part of the lesson already. If you have any doubts, make sure you type it in on the WhatsApp group that we have so that I can go ahead and explain this further. But today's session, we will be completing the lesson and reading and understanding of the second part of the lesson. So let's begin. All right. They have a few questions before the story starts. The jinn remonstrated with the camel who said humph, remonstrated meaning protested with the camel who said humph all the time. The camel's beautiful back suddenly grew a lump, which was the camel's hump. The jinn assured the camel his hump will always be a help and not a hindrance. A hindrance means an obstruction, meaning it would always be of help to the camel and it would never be an obstruction to him. All right, I just want to make note or give you the correct pronunciation of the word because the videos that you all sent me have the wrong pronunciation of this word. D-J-I-N-N -N is pronounced Jin and not Dijin. Okay, most of you have said Dijin which is wrong, please correct yourselves. The correct way of pronouncing it is a jinn, which is short for a genie. Okay, just like how I explained to you, all right? All right let's get down to the reading and understanding of the lesson. The jinn rolled himself up in a dust cloak and took a walk across the desert. And he found the camel looking at his own reflection in a pool of water all right so the din what he does is he rolls himself in his dust cloak what is a cloak a cloak is a long overcoat all right so it's a coat that you wear but it's a little longer all right so in a dust cloak meaning that all the dust that there was around formed something which looked like a cloak around the gin all right so he dressed, he rolled himself in his dust cloak and took a walk across the desert and found the camel. What was the camel doing? It was looking at his own reflection in a pool of water, just like you have in the picture below. All right, my friend, said the jinn, what is this I hear of you doing no work? The jinn sat down with his chin on his hand while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. All right, so the camel does not respond to him, even though the jinn asks him a question. He says, what, do you, what is this I hear of you doing no work? The camel does not bother replying. He just continues looking at his own reflection in the pool of water. Now, the jinn then says, you've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning, all on account of your idleness. What is idleness? Idleness means when you are not being active or say if you're lazy, that would be idle, all right? Meaning that you're not active and you're lazy, all right? So what the jinn goes and asks the camel is, you've, been, you've given the three extra work. Who are the three? The first one, is the horse the second one is a little doggy and the third uh, animal that comes and speaks to this camel is the cow or the ox sorry all right so it says ever since monday morning you've given these three extra work said the jinn and he went on thinking with his chin on his hand humph said the camel the jinn gets angry and he says, I shouldn't say that again if I were you. All right. He's saying, don't say that again. If I were you, I would not say that. I shouldn't say that if I were you. You might say it once too often. I want you to work. All right. So he says, don't keep saying that time and again, because what I want you to do is I want you to work. And if you say that again, you might just say it once too often. 
And what the camel does now? It, the, the camel said humph again, but no sooner had he said it that he saw his back. That, but no loom, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat that. But no longer had he said it that he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big lump. All right, so puffing up meaning uh, becoming a little bigger and bigger, just like the puffs you eat. All right, so when puffs are made, they are made with dough. All right, and the dough is usually uh, a little bit softer and flatter. But when this is baked, the dough slowly rises up and becomes nice and fluffy. All right, so that is called puffing up. So when the camel said hump again, he saw his back that he was so proud of. He was really proud of his back. All right, then he saw his back slowly puffing up and puffing up into a great big hump. Do you see that? Said the jinn. That is your very own hump that you've brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday and you've done no work since Monday when your work began. Now you're going to work, all right? So this is what the genie tells the camel. He says, that's your very own hump because you keep saying hump, hump again. You've brought it upon your very own self just because you have not been working. Today is Thursday and since Monday you have not done any work. Work began on Monday and you have not done any work since Monday. Now you're going to work, says the jinn. How can I, said the camel with this, with this hump on my back. All right, so the camel says, how can I work with this hump on his back? This is the first time that the camel opens his mouth and actually replies to somebody. Okay, because before, all, the only thing that he said was humph, all right, humph could be like, okay, whatever, all right, it could be something like that, but he never replies. Okay, but when the jinn gives the camel his humph, the first time the camel opens his mouth and speaks and says, how can I with this hump on my back? That has a purpose, then said the jinn. All because you missed those three days, you will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your hump and you don't ever say, I never did anything for you. All right, so come out of the desert and go to the tree and behave. That's what the jinn says. All right, so the jinn says, you have not done any work. So don't say I have not done anything for you. I have actually helped you by giving that hump because you will be able to live off that hump for three continuous days without eating or without drinking any water. All right. So that's what the jinn says. He says, I've helped you. I've not given you, I've not given you extra trouble, but just because you have been lazy and have not been doing any work and have been idle throughout, this is what you will do. You will work for three continuous days and, with, and those three days will be without food and without water. You can work continuously without taking a break or with, for drink to, in order to drink food and water. Now, and then he tells the camel, now go to the tree and behave. And the camel went away to join the tree. And from that day to this the camel always wears a hump. We call it hump now, not to hurt its feelings, all right? Obviously, the camel was so proud of its uh, back that it did not have a hump, all right? But once, when it did not work and when it became idle, the genie gave him a hump. And now, just so that it, we don't hurt his feelings, we call it a hump. But as he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world and he has never yet learned how to behave. Yes, generally a trait of a camel would be, you know, it doesn't really listen to you. It's got its own thing to do, right? It's not like a dog. If a doggy is there, like you tell him sit, it'll sit. If you tell him go fetch the ball and come, it'll go fetch the ball and come. 
The camel will help you, it will let you easily sit on its back and take you far long distances really really fast. The ox helps people out in the field but what does a camel do? It just helps transport people through the desert. All right. So from that day till today, from the beginning of the world till today, he has never learned yet how to behave. All right. And he's always that way. That is one of the characteristics of the camel. All right. So that brings us to the end of the session. All right. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Uh, the following video will have understanding of the question and answers that we have for this lesson. So, uh, Go ahead and uh, watch that video as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.